Hello YouTube, this is the fifth video of the series I've been making and it's basically a run-through of what Reverend Donna Serafina said in her first reading of the missing kids out of Rexburg, Idaho named Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow. So she, remember at the time when she made it, and I'll say this again for those who are just seeing this as their first video, make sure you watch it from uh, the first video I made because there's a lot of interesting information. But uh, at the time when this video was made, nobody knew the whereabouts of the kids. All they knew was that uh, it was some tangled web of deceit and that there were missing kids out of Rexburg, Idaho. So nobody knew if they were dead or alive. And then Donna came in, she did this reading and saw these extremely vivid, descriptive, disgusting, um, horrifying events play out in her in her reading um, and she was bold enough to speak about them when nobody would have believed her because it's just too gruesome. So let's go ahead and start rolling through um, what she has to say. It said around 59 minutes into her hour 12 minute video. Let's go through it. Life of the man, the stepfather who helped murder these children or dispose of their bodies or whatever. Um, if this lady is no victim, this this mother of these kids, Ugh, she's yeah. she she may even be the one who killed them. She's diabolical, guys. You know that. It's so gross. Did the mother kill those two kids? Did this this stepfather or mother's boyfriend kill the two kids? Are the two kids still alive? I hope this phone is still recording. Yep, looks like it is. This has been one hour. And um, I'm asking to connect with the, the girl. Okay, at this point, she starts to tap into what I believe are the final moments of JJ and Tylee's lives. Um, she starts to see very in, in very minute detail what's going on with them. So it's going to be some really shocking stuff, but not shocking now that you know about this case and, and have read that document. So let's go ahead and, and listen to her. I forgot her name, but the girl that's missing, the little girl, um, or the boy. Okay, so the boy shows me, he's playing with something. Uh, I don't know if it's current or past, but I feel like the boy is playing with um, some, it might be blocks made out of kind of st like a stuffed animal material, felt, but you know, soft blocks or something. He heard a loud bang. Interesting. That startled him and he turned around. Let me pause it there for a second. What I believe she's seeing is, uh, it also relates to the probable cause affidavit. The night that the, the family, so Lori, the two kids, and Alex, the night that they came back from Yellowstone, I believe they ambushed Tylee inside of that apartment. I don't believe they killed her at Yellowstone. I truly don't because it seems like they came home and then all the the weird activity of, of Alex going to her, her apartment and stuff happened in the middle of that night. Like between the hours of, let's see, I have it. On Monday, September 9th. So from midnight to 1244, Cox's phone was located at his apartment. However, then at 2.42 a.m. to 3.37 a.m., Cox is located again at Lori's apartment. 
where Lori lived with Tylee and JJ. This is significant not only because he is there in the middle of the night, but also because this is the only time in September he appears to go over to Lori's between midnight and 6 a.m. So I believe she was killed in that apartment. And she's going to start describing what she sees right here. It feels like they sh the daughter was shot, like, r r right there when you come in the front door about 10 feet, like, right in front of the kitchen. Like, I, I don't know why someone would do a murder just like that. Yeah. There, where, like, obviously you'd have a big mess to clean up, like. And then... He goes into there and he looks and sees this. The mom comes over to him. I don't see the gun in her hand, so makes me wonder if she put it down or if he, if the stepfather did. Oh no! See now I'm getting blunt force trauma that to the head. So sick. Okay. Maybe they didn't die the same way. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's getting hit in the head. Uh, I think he's smashing her skull with um, the butt of an axe or the handle part of an axe. He wants to crush it so no one can recognize it. So the bird's taken away and stuff. Wow. Ah, and then I'm feeling like the mom putting, um, going, it's okay to the boy. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's all right. It's okay. Everything's all right. And then just, she has some like giant plastic bag and she just puts it over his head really fast and starts wrapping something around. I don't know if it's tape or duct tape. What? And then the father sees that she's yeah. going gung ho on that. And so he runs yeah. over to help her. Like they pin him down. And the father's trying to, or the man's f trying to pinch his nose so he can't breathe. Let's revisit, let's revisit this part of the affidavit. Okay, paragraph number, let's go to, there's 32, hold on a second. Of course, it's not in front of me. Okay, here we go. Members of the FBI ERT team removed the top layer of sod Underneath the layer of sod were several large flat rocks, which she talks about, I say I think in my first video. The rocks were removed and two pieces of flat paneling were found. The paneling was removed and investigators exposed a round object covered in black, black plastic. Upon exposing the round object covered in black plastic, a strong odor was, observed, was noticed. A FBI ERT member used a small sharp instrument and made a small incision in the plastic and a layer of white plastic was observed. An incision was made into the white layer of plastic exposing what appears what appeared to be human remains the crown of a head covered in light brown hair the remaining dirt around this object was methodically uh, uh, removed exposing what appeared to be a body wrapped in black plastic the plastic appeared to be tightly wrapped around the body and secured with gray duct tape she saw it first Let's go ahead and roll from here. So that's at the doorway of where there's, I think there's bunk beds there. We need to but find there's out. there's a bedroom, the boy's bedroom. I'm not 100% sure if he shares it with a girl or not, but I feel like there's those kind of bunk beds or something where, um, where the bottom bed's a little wider. And the comforters are navy blue. Be interesting to know, huh? So he's, she's leaning back into the bedroom when she kind of does that from behind. And then the stepfather jumps in to help with that. I mean, and I think that's probably why they ended up with the black plastic all over the boy, because yeah. it kind of started out that way. 
Yeah. You know, I don't know if that, if that, if that was a leaf bag or what, which would mean total premeditation. Like, if she, why would she have a leaf bag in the house? Yeah. Tana is amazing, guys. You know? Isn't she? And then it feels like the girl's body's over. Like, the kitchen that kind of you look out onto the lake. Interesting. It feels like you walk in, and it's like a kitchen, but it's open to the living room, so... You don't she's, really lose much. She's it's seeing a long, Lori's apartment. Narrower. That's kitchen. what it you looks don't really like. Lose it's much open of a view by to the living room. Having that kitchen area there, it's like either oh from the God. living room you can see or from the. Kitchen. I never, never, never noticed that detail before. Unbelievable. All right. Um, you know, my video is going to be ending here in just a few minutes. Let's see if we can get just a little bit more in. Maybe some of the instruments he used to do some of this damage throughout this whole crime spree, this whole little scene. Um, yeah, so it feels like he's like out on that middle of the lake on um, that little aluminum boat. And I don't know which boat then she's like, about. has some all these tools or something um, wrapped in a blue tarp, and by tools I mean the hacksaw. The, yeah, my hatchet, all that crap. <sighs> Dumps over there. He may have kept his axe. Like he, there, he might have had an attachment to one of these tools, so he didn't want to dump it. So there might be something up on the wall, in the hobby shed, slash garage. Tell them. I don't get the feeling it's. It could be wide enough for a car to pull in, but it could be. It was really built like a garage, as but it's. Its primary purpose is being a hobby shed. Let's look at it again. Whatever. They might pull cars up in it to work, but that's not the main purpose. Okay. I believe that's what she's talking about. Kylie's body was found right near there, near the fire pit. I guess the fear is if I say too much, then um, it will the, it will dwindle in importance the point of where these bodies are, of these children. And that would be, it. now, God, I hate to even say some kids are dead. That's the most horrible thing. Yeah. Hopefully they aren't. I, I, oh, I again, to, psychic is not the same as full-on mediumship and that's what i do i could do mediumship so good this is psychic she did a good you know, job here it may have poof of air and have no real Absolutely. thing and maybe they're playing at their grandma somewhere you know she didn't want to believe maybe it they've got some grandma type that's just watching them and but I'm seeing all this and I, it, it's real important to figure out about that lake and that boulder and right up in there is that, that that's where the body is. All right, I hate to say that, I hate to say it, it's so stupid and please don't think I'm a lousy medium for if I'm wrong because this is not mediumship. No, Donna, this is psychic. you did good, you did very psychic good. Psychic is 10% as strong as mediumship, literally. Mediumship is the definitive word because it's the direct word of the Let's see right here if there's any more very very accurate and again they're showing me the bulldozer so that's going to be your landmark all right okay well thank you so much for watching as we conclude this the series of uh, Donna Serafina's first reading. If you haven't watched all of them, please go back to the first and, and carry on through there because there's a lot of details that Donna gives that we see in this probable cause affidavit and it just, it's a, a perfect parallel. So unbelievable and Donna is talented. Please like this video if you can, uh, share it. And let's get the message out that Donna saw it first because she deserves, absolutely deser deserves the acknowledgement. Um, please make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.